hello everyone in this video I am going to discuss with you some of the questions related to the experimental chemistry so let's begin uh, the first question is about the apparatus and uh, in this question we have uh, given a diagram in which uh, they are asking which piece of apparatus is connected at position X so we are going to find the rate of this reaction and uh, there is a gas actually being formed oxygen gas you see is being formed so uh, we need an apparatus over here that can collect that gas so the gas can be collected with the help of a gas range so the answer is B go ahead in the next question the diagram shows four piece of apparatus which are used to measure the volume of a gas or a liquid okay which piece of apparatus should always be filled to the same level and now looking at option a b and c you got many marks on it many divisions are there so we can measure many different volumes with the help of a b and c but with d pipette we can measure only a fixed volume because there is only one mark present in this so a pipette has to be filled to the same level always now let's move ahead and see some questions related to the collection and drying of gases in the first question is saying a gas Y is less dense than air and is very soluble in water and is an alkali the three properties given less dense than air very soluble and an alkali so which method is used to collect a dry sample of this gas fine so very soluble so we cannot use method A since it is very soluble if the gas is soluble the gas will dissolve and will not be collected fine uh, the gas is an uh, is less dense if it is less dense then we cannot use this method because this is the method that we can use for heavier gases next we got C uh, we can use this method because uh, the gas is lighter this is also fine lighter but uh, they are saying the third property is the gas is an alkali so for an alkaline gas we need an alkaline drying agent sulfuric acid concentrate is an acid and it will react with the gas so we will not use so answer is C for this question which is calcium oxide is an alkaline drying agent so that will not react with the gas let's move to the next question So in this question we got uh, a simple laboratory apparatus to collect a gas dry gas which is this gas the thing is that the gas that we are collecting is by this method and this method is used for lighter gases so from this list a carbon dioxide has a molecular mass of 44 chlorine is 71 hydrogen is 2 and HCl is 36.5 and uh, so the lightest gas is hydrogen that we can collect with the help of this so C is the right answer look at this question oxygen was prepared from hydrogen peroxide the first few tubes of the gas were rejected because the gas was contaminated by okay we are collecting the gas over here but the first few tubes we have rejected that means the gas was coming from here but we have not collected that gas in this tube why because look initially in this uh, container over here there would be present air okay and oxygen gas is produced from this reaction and uh, oxygen gas it get mixed with air and uh, they both traveled out of this that means initially the oxygen gas it would be impure because of the air so what is present in air the major gas present in air is nitrogen next hydrogen chloride is very soluble and chlorine is only slightly soluble both gases can be dried using sulfuric acid concentrated fine so which method is fine now now first of all we pass the gases through water first and then through the acid drying agent so in these diagrams we got uh, option B and D they're the fine because in these options we are passing the gas through water first and then through sulfuric acid these two are wrong now uh, which one of these are correct uh, now the tubes they must be inside first so the gas it can pass through the water and the the soluble gas it get dissolved in water and insoluble gas comes out 
and then the gas is dried like this so this is the right way this is not the right way that we are not passing the gas through you can you see the mixture is not being passed into the water over here so that's why it's a wrong one so b is a right answer next question a gas x is less dense than air and is insoluble okay which method cannot be used if you look at these four methods uh, a we cannot use a because in a the, the gas is being delivered downward since the gas is less dense what will happen the less dense gas will simply go out of it it will not be collected inside the tube while this one will collect definitely uh, this will also collect because you got the water insoluble gas and D the, the gas range is always fine for all sort of gases so A is a right answer so in the next question a gas is less dense than air and dissolves in water which diagram shows the correct method for collecting this gas okay since the gas is less dense we cannot uh, deliver it downward so this is wrong we can deliver it upward that is fine uh, this way we never use such a such a way of delivering a gas uh, since the gas is dissolves in water we cannot use the water to collect so the answer is B next question number eight we got four diagrams given over here which method is suitable for collecting a gas which has the properties described okay uh, method number one can we use method one to collect a less dense gas no because we are delivering the gas downward this method is applied to heavier gases so this is not the answer okay uh, method 2 denser uh, than air method 2 denser than air and soluble water yes we can because gas range can be used to collect any gas whether soluble insoluble lighter heavier is fine number 3 less dense than air and soluble in water now method 3 we cannot use it for the gas which is soluble in water because the gas will dissolve over here and it will not be collected so it's not fine okay uh, method 4 for denser gases no method 4 cannot be used for denser gases because this way the upward delivery it is suitable for lighter gases so the answer is B for this question okay next question sulfur dioxide gas that is prepared by heating sodium sulfide uh, in hydrochloric acid it's an acidic gas sulfur dioxide is more dense than air which set of apparatus is suitable for preparing and collecting a dry sample of sulfur dioxide so for acidic gas you should not use basic drying agent you have to use a acidic drying agent so in which apparatus you see the acidic drying agent here we got the acidic drying agent and here we got the acidic drying agent here we also got the acidic drying agent okay next thing that is more dense more dense means it should be delivered downwards so delivering upward in this method is wrong and delivering down it's fine delivering down is fine okay now uh, next thing what is the difference between the two diagrams in the B we are using this this is what this is a funnel and uh, this funnel is open from here that means when the gas will be prepared SO2 gas it can escape out of this funnel so this method is not suitable uh, instead we are using over here it's a tapped funnel you see there is a tap over here so it will not allow the gas SO2 to escape okay so the answer is C for this question so next we have testing purity first question which test could be used to show the sample of water is pure so purity checks remember there are only three ways to check purity in all levels melting point the boiling point and the third one is with the help of uh, chromatography so uh, in the first question which test could be used to show the sample of water is pure so it freeze at exactly zero that is fine uh, which at which temperature does the concentrated solution of sodium chloride begins to boil now we got an impurity added remember uh, if pure water it is freezing at 0 degrees Celsius and is boiling at 100 degrees Celsius if you add an impurity what happens the melting point the freezing point decreases and the boiling point increases that means it will start melting or freezing at let's say minus 4 degrees Celsius or it may boil at a higher temperature like 104 degrees Celsius so the answer is D for this question 
impurity raises the boiling point and reduces the melting point. Which statement about pure hexane is correct? It boils over a range of temperature. When something boils over a range of temperature, that means the boiling starts at lower temperature and ends at a higher temperature. It is only possible when there is something impurity is present. That is not the right answer. Uh, hexane will burn in excess oxygen to form carbon dioxide. It mixes with water. Nothing related to that. It melts a fixed temperature. Yes, fixed temperature melting at a fixed temperature is test for purity. So let's move ahead then. So the next we have separation techniques. In the first question, we got this reaction given. Which method could be used to separate the products? Now in the products, what we have, we got the potassium nitrate and we got the lead iodide. And uh, what's the difference between the two? If you look, it is a solid and this one is an aqueous. Aqueous means it remains dissolved in water while solid means it forms solid particles. So something solid present in a solution, it can be separated by filtration. If you try to distill, what will happen? Uh, distillation will not give you any of these. It will just give you water because distillation will make the water to boil and water will be collected. Crystallization, if you use crystallization, you will not be able to separate the yellow solid from this aqueous potassium nitrate because they both will uh, be present together. And if you evaporate water, potassium nitrate and lead iodide, they will both be present in the uh, powdered state. So crystallization cannot be used. Solution of lead nitrate and potassium iodide are mixed together in the preparation of lead iodide. Which method is used to separate the lead iodide from this mixture? So again the similar one, lead iodide is an insoluble salt and uh, that's why we use filtration to separate it. Copper sulfate crystals are separated from the sand. Okay, Copper sulfate is a soluble salt and sand is insoluble. So first of all, uh, will we do filter first of all or dissolve first of all? Definitely we will dissolve first of all and after dissolving, what will happen? Copper sulfate will get dissolved and sand will not. So you will separate the sand either by evaporating first or filtering first. Definitely filtering first. So we got the answer D. Number four, we got sand and salt, a two substance and we want to separate them. Uh, and we want pure salt from this mixture. We need, uh, we need to remove sand out of it. Salt, you know, is water soluble sand is insoluble so what we do first then add to water add to water add to water and filter no filter is not possible initially we have to add water first of all and then after adding water uh, is it just evaporate directly not uh, because when you uh, add water and just evaporate you will again get salt and sand mixed uh, if you just filter you will get sand separated but salt solution we want pure uh, salt. For that purpose, we need to filter and then evaporate as well. So C is the right answer. So the next question, uh, which method could be used to obtain charcoal from mixture of powdered charcoal with sodium chloride? So the powdered charcoal, it is insoluble in water and sodium chloride is water soluble. So we cannot use chromatography for such method. Uh, filter after shaking with water. Yes, that is fine because when you filter after shaking with water, uh, shaking with water will separate sodium chloride and uh, sh filter will separate charcoal. Distillation cannot. Distillation will give you only water. Uh, which is the best method for obtaining pure water from ink? Pure water from ink. If you want to get a solvent from a mixture, solvent, uh, we have to do distillation. Uh, because when you heat the ink, uh, the water will evaporate and it will be condensed in the condenser and will be separated out. Which process is suitable for obtaining water from aqueous solution of sugar? Again, the same question. We need distillation. Okay, the next question. Which mixture could best be separated using a separating funnel? Separating funnel is used to separate the mixture of liquids which are immiscible. So, we got oil and sand. Uh, oil is a liquid but sand is a solid. So we cannot use oil and water. Yes, they both are liquids and they are immiscible. Sodium chloride and sand, they both are solids. 
sodium chloride and water sodium chloride is solid so b is the answer which gas is not obtained industrially by fractional distillation so fractional distillation is used to get different gases from air and air contain oxygen gas nitrogen gas argon gas ammonia is it is not prepared by fractional distillation in the next question a uh, mixture containing equal volumes of two liquids that mix completely but do not react together are placed in apparatus shown and heated until thermometer first shows a steady reading okay so we got two liquids uh, mix completely do not react okay so the first steady reading is shown at which position will there be the highest proportion of the liquid with a higher boiling point fine so you know uh, this diagram it represents the fractional distillation in which the first liquid that leaves this is a liquid with a lower boiling point so that means the liquid with a higher boiling point it should be in the lowest place so it should be at d while a there will be liquid with the lowest boiling point let's move ahead another question related to the fraction distillation we got ethanol and water their boiling points are given uh, which graph shows the change in the concentration of ethanol in the boiling flask as the distillation proceeds so since ethanol has a lower boiling point you see 78 it will boil off first so its concentration will decrease with the passage of time so decreasing concentration is in c so let's move to the next question again where should the bulb of thermometer be placed so you know thermometer should be over here the the point at which the vapors they are just leaving the fractioning column so is b is a correct place oil floats on water which statement is not true of oil and water oil and water are immiscible yes they are immiscible oil is less dense than water yes it is less dense because you they're saying oil floats on water the next option some molecules in oil have a relatively higher molecular mass than water so oil molecules that definitely they are heavier uh, so the last option the type of bonding within water molecules this you have to focus on this word within water molecules so within water molecules what sort of bonding we have is is a covalent bond and uh, within oil molecules you also have covalent bond so and the statement says that the type of bonding within water molecule is different from the type of bonding within molecule of oil it is wrong because they both contain covalent bonding benzene and cyclohexane are both flammable liquids they are able to mix with each other uh, without separating into two layers uh, they have very similar boiling point it is difficult to separate a mixture of these two liquids by fraction distillation why it is difficult to separate the mixture of benzene and cyclohexane by fraction distillation you see uh, their boiling points they are very close since they are very close boiling point it is difficult to separate by fractional distillation so they are very similar boiling point that is actually the reason because fractional distillation is a technique that is based upon the difference in the boiling points okay next we got uh, the hexane and heptane given uh, fine which graph would be obtained if the temperature at t was plotted against the total volume of distillate collected okay so we got hexane boiling point 70 and heptane boiling point 98 first we will collect the hexane let's see the volume of distillate and uh, first of all the volume of distillate that will you get will be at temperature of 70 so this is the only diagram in which the total volume of distillate is increasing at 70 and then there is no distillate and then is we getting again some distillate at temperature around 100 so a is a right answer which mixture can be separated into components by adding salt stirring and filtering okay so we add water stir and filter so the one substance should be soluble the other should be insoluble mixture a calcium carbonate is insoluble sodium carbonate is soluble we can use this technique magnesium iron no sodium chloride and copper sulfate both are soluble and again sulfuric acid hydrochloric acid both are soluble next question a mixture of sand and sodium chloride can be separated in three steps step 1 is to add water to the mixture the diagram shows step 2 and 
where is pure sodium chloride collected it's fine so we are having a filter paper and a funnel okay uh, so pure sodium chloride it is definitely obtained after the evaporation step so we expect it at D because we got sand and sodium chloride the sand will be over B okay a C will be the filtrate and uh, the filtrate we are hitting that filtrate to get pure sodium chloride at D so these were some questions related to the separation techniques now let's see some questions related to chromatography uh, the first question a mixture of two substance is uh, spotted on the piece of chromatography paper the paper was inserted in a beaker containing a liquid for the separation of the substance to occur the mixture must the option one state be placed so that the spot is just below the level of liquid that is wrong be soluble yes because without if the components they are not soluble in the solvent they will not be separated from each other contain substance of the same RF if they have the same RF they will not be separated because they will travel equal distance contain substance that are colored we can separate colorless substance as well using the chromatography next question the diagram shows the chromatogram obtained by analysis of a single dye okay three measurements are shown how the RF value is calculated so RF value is calculated by distance traveled by component so you see the original spot of the dye that means here we have placed the dye so we will start measuring the distance from this level and the distance traveled by spot is this and that is why while distance traveled by solvent is this which is x plus y so we can say y over x plus y will be the RF value for this in which method separation of RF value is used simple straightforward question is definitely chromatography in the next question food colorings they are separated using the paper chromatography let's look at this question we got this chromatogram which statements is correct black dye can be made by mixing green red and yellow inks so here we got the black dye and uh, we are mixing green uh, green okay it's fine because green is present in the black no problem in that okay red no uh, red has this spot that is fine but red also got this one there is no spot over here that means this is the wrong option let's see the next one brown ink can be made mixing blue and red inks brown ink can be mixed by uh, made by blue and red so this is brown uh, blue okay fine and red no red cannot be used red is not used to make the brown ink over here so it's not the right option again yellow ink can be used to make brown ink yellow ink can be used to make brown ink no because the the brown ink do not have any spot corresponding to yellow over here the last option is yellow ink may be used to make green ink definitely is a correct answer left so let's see how this is correct yellow ink it may be used to make the green ink yes because this spot is matching with this spot so D is a right answer okay so glucose has RF value 0.5 which sugar is glucose 0.5 means it should have covered the half distance 0.5 so this is the C that has covered the distance of 0.5 the B it would have covered only 0.1 it might have 0.25 sometime and it will be 0.9 around so C is a correct answer next Q is a pure sample of a substance pure when when you said pure pure means it will produce only one spot in the chromatographic paper so RF is 0.9 fine so 0.9 is mean it means that it would be it has covered a lot of distance so this spot is fine this spot is fine but the problem with this A is that it contain this also which makes it an impure substance so it will, will answer will be C for this question so in the next question four samples are spotted on the chromatographic paper uh, it is known that one of these samples is pure compound Q okay we got a pure compound Q 
A separate sample of pure compound Q is also spotted on the paper. The paper is placed in a solvent. Which statement is correct? They are saying that uh, sample 2 has traveled the, the farthest. Okay, the sample 2, no, sample 2 haven't traveled the farthest. Actually, uh, the sample 4 has traveled the farthest over here. So, sample 4 has traveled the, the farthest and uh, sample 1 is pure. Sample 1 is pure? No, sample 1 contains 3 dyes. Sample 1 cannot be pure. Sample 2 is pure? Yes, because it has only one dye. So, D is the right answer. A chemist wishes to separate and identify mixture of substance using paper chromatography. The diagram shows the apparatus used. The solvent is water. The solvent water is allowed to reach to top of the paper before the chemist removes the paper from the solvent. Which problem does this cause? You see, water has reached up to the top of this paper. So, if water has reached over here, we will not be able to calculate the RF values because RF values they are calculated by uh, measuring the distance traveled by components and distance traveled by solvent. Solvent should not travel up to top of this like this. So, we will be unable to find the RF. Next question. A paper chromatography experiment is carried out to separate and identify the mixture of amino acids produced from the hydrolysis of protein which apparatus is needed. So we need definitely a chromatography paper is fine. Uh, since we are using amino acids, they are colorless, we need locating agent. Okay, then we need marker pen, we don't need marker pen. We need pencil, that is okay. We need uh, ruler, okay, we need solvent, fine. We don't need th thermometer, so B is with the right answer. So these were some questions related to the unit number one experimental chemistry. Hope you have got these all. In the next video, we will see questions related to the theory questions related to the experimental chemistry. Till then, goodbye.